Hello, everyone. I would first like to welcome you to Social Work 350. Social Work 350 is a three hour course uh, and it's titled Social Work Research. In the syllabus, the course description gives you an outline of what to expect in the course. This course will examine the roles of research from the social work perspective. Students are taught how data is collected, analyzed, interpreted, and presented in this course. As we move on further down to the prerequisites for this course, uh, students in this course should have already completed Mathematics or uh, Psychology 200, and it's strongly recommended that you have PS 101, which is Intro to Psychology. As you look under the area of contact, you will see my contact information uh, where I'm located in Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, my name is Dr. Dickerson. You'll find my phone number, which is 843-745-1100, or you can reach me on my cell, which is 843-345-2224. There's a list of other contact individuals also in the area of contact. The required text for this course is Faulkner and Faulkner. It's dated 2016, and the title of your book should be Research Methods for Social Work, a Perspective-Based Approach, and it's the second edition. So make sure that you have that particular textbook that will help you with the course. I'm going to continue on in the syllabus, and we're going to take a look at uh, section three of the syllabus that discuss the following methods are used to attain course uh, learning objectives. Uh, when you get some time, spend some time reading those learning objectives. It's my hope to do a couple more. I'll do some more of these recordings that will aid you in completing this course. This is the first time I've actually done this, so be patient, and hopefully it will be successful for each of you. Uh, section four talks a little bit about the course content. So you're gonna look at introduction to inquiry, problem formation and measurements. You're gonna look at the logics of research design. You're gonna also look at quantitative and qualitative modes of observation, uh, analysts of data, and of course, the social context of research and the impact of new research. The grading for this course is basically laid out in section five. Uh, students are responsible for all textbook assignments, outside reading and class lecture and discussion topics. Uh, students will also take advantage uh, of attending all class sessions uh, online I normally tell online students that they need to check uh, their online course at least three times out of the day in the event that I may post uh, some handouts for you or I may provide you with a study guide for your midterm and final exam. Uh, so just be on the lookout for constant emails or emails that I will be sending to you that will kind of also aid you for this course. Uh, of course, this course, you must receive a grade of C or better uh, to move on to the next uh, section of your, your program. In other words, if you fail this course, you will not be allowed to go to field after completing this course. So your assignments for this course, uh, grading assignments, are laid out. Uh, also below that, of course, you see the grading scale, what an A is, what a B is, what you can get for a C or D. So you're going to be doing a research proposal, and it's my intent to kind of help you with that, and I will guide you through that process and hopefully provide you with an example of a research proposal, but it's also one in your textbook that will give you the same format that I have. I just condense my dissertation topic to uh, give you an indication of what a research proposal will look like. You also have a midterm exam, which is equal to 20 points, and your midterm exam is going to uh, start with the window opening up on the 22nd of 
May, and it runs through the 28th of May. And then you have your final exam, of course, starts on six, on the 19th of June, and it ends, uh, of course, on the 23rd of June. So during that time frame, your window will be open for you to actually take your exams. Uh, you, it's your responsibility to contact your proctor to ensure that you have a scheduled time within that window. Uh, I will not open the exam for anyone who failed to basically take the exam within this window, not next they have extreme reasons such as medical appointment, which is verified uh, with a doctor's excuse or what have you. You also have assignments throughout this course and it's ongoing through the, the eight week sessions and that's also worth 20% of your grade. And you will have some discussions in the discussion section also. And I will be going over this when we get into uh, the portal to take a look at how the course is structured for you. So there will be some examples that will provide that information for you. Section six basically is the Limestone College policies and it lists all the policies that you must be acquainted with. Uh, it also talks about policies for day students, uh, extended campus students. You must be concerned with the policies for ECI, uh, which is the campus internet students. Of course, section six is your statement of uh, non-discrimination. I would recommend if you have a legitimate disability that you must contact the ADA office uh, and set up some kind of arrangement with them. In response, they will notify me of your disability. They won't tell me what your disability is, but they'll tell me what, what, what's an acceptable, acceptable requirement for the disability. As we move on, I want to talk a little bit about the course schedule, and I will lay this out again for you. Uh, in another discussion where we can go over this a little bit more in detail. So what we want to do is first look at unit one. So you're going to have a total of eight units. And what we want to first look at is unit one. And in, a, in unit one, there's an introduction, which basically students will introduce themselves and discuss their thoughts, experience regarding this class. It's always good to know what the perception of a, a, a course is so you can make sure that you have the correct understanding of what is expected of you. A lot of times when students get the paper, they tend to write projects based on what they think it is. And so I want you to really pay more attention on your expectation of what you think this course is because it's going to make a difference later on down the line. The initial posts uh, will be due on Thursday. So in other words, all of your discussion posts are due on Thursday and you need to respond to two peers uh, before Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. In other words, you're going to do a, dis a discussion. You're going to support your discussion with something from the textbook or a peer review article. You're going to also support your, your response to your peers with something from the textbook or uh, peer review article. In other words, I'm looking for you to actually reference your post to yourself, your post, and your post to your peers, in other words, two peers. There will be points taken away if you fail to support your response or response to your peers. So just be mindful of that. Once again, all posts are due, your, your initial posts are due Thursday night at 11.59 by 11 .59 p.m. and to your peers uh, before Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. Failure to respond to your peers, once again, will reduce points. Also in this course, we have what we call an Ask Anyway section. And this is a discussion board that basically will be available. And you should be able to have anything you would like to ask of your peers or your instructor. In other words, your discussion post should be free from general conversation. This is where you go in where you want to greet a, a peer, uh, share some thoughts with a peer uh, that's not in the discussion board section. Basically, in the discussion board section, I want you to actually have your work posted in that section. So the Ask Anyway discussion uh, board is there available for students to post 
any question they may have. Also to the instructor, as a, a habit for me teaching online, I always like students to give me a call because sometimes when they email me, their questions are so broad and it has so many answers that could be to it. So if you feel that you have a lengthy uh, question that you want to ask me, it may be best to just give me a call and we can talk about it over the phone. Or, you know, if you feel you have to send an email, be very specific and lay out each one of your questions where I can answer each one of them individually rather than just making a broad statement. Of course, also in Unit 1, you have what we call assignment. And so after reviewing the syllabus and the course outline, you need to complete the questions in Blackboard. In other words, there's some questions under Unit 1 that you have to complete in Blackboard. Uh, so that takes Unit 1. And then in the second week, we're going to move on to Unit 2. So be mindful, you have assignment in Unit 2 also. So when you click on Unit 2, it's going to lay out all of the assignments that you're basically going to have in your course. So this assignment requires in Unit 2 for you to read the scenario on page 28 and 29, answer three critical thinking questions on the page 29, and then this is due on Sunday night at 11.59 at p.m. So once again, you're going to read the scenario on page 28 and 29. You're going to answer three critical thinking questions on page 29. And this assignment is going to be due on Sunday at 11.59 p.m. Uh, be mindful, even in your assignments, when you answer those three questions, you need to either be supporting your response with a peer review article or something from the textbook that you may have covered or read. You have another assignment in section two, basically having you read the case scenario on page 47 and 49. And based on the scenario, you're gonna answer the four critical thinking questions on page 49. Once again, this assignment is gonna be due on Sunday at 11.59 p.m. So in Unit 2, you have two assignments, basically, that you're going to have to complete by Sunday at 11.59 p.m. Also, uh, you're going to read and discuss Chapter 2, Ethical Consideration. You'll find out on the Getting Started page, I have provided you with a link that talks a little bit about ethical considerations by the NSW. A and also the South Carolina Ethical Standards Board. So you'll find that on the Getting Started page. And we will cover that after I get through covering the syllabus. Then we're going to move to Unit 3, which starts on the, uh, May 15th and it ends on the 21st. Uh, basically, you have an assignment there, other than reading the chapters that's required of you. You have an assignment and you also have a discussion. Your assignment is to read the case scenario on page 28 based on the scenario and answer the four critical thinking questions on page 68. And this assignment will be due Sunday in the third week of the course by 11.59 p.m. Uh, you also have a discussion that you have to respond to, and it says, uh, which of the non-probability sample methods would would you basically use uh, to research the needs of the homeless population in your area? So in other words, it's asking you a question that you need to respond to, and you're going to look at the sample uh, that you're going to use. And, and when you read Chapter 5 uh, that talks about sampling, it will give you an idea of that. Uh, be mindful. Uh, research is something I love. And... I think if you really get into this and get an understanding, you'll love it too. Uh, especially if you're going to grad school, you're going to have a statistics, uh, but you won't do research. But if you're thinking about a PhD, then definitely you're going to be looking at qualitative research, quantitative research, and you're going to look at sampling. So all of these things will come up. I know it's a little too far to be thinking about PhD when all of you are prospecting probably thinking about your MSW after completing uh, your BA in social work. So section four basically starts with uh, May the 22nd and it ends on the 28th of May. 
And in Unit 4, you have assignment. And your assignment is to basically read the case scenario uh, on page 107 and through 109. And based on the case scenario, you're going to answer four critical thinking questions on the page 109. Uh, this assignment, once again, will be due on the fourth week that Sunday at 11.59 p.m. So you're finding that all your assignments uh, that you're going to have is going to be due on Sunday at 11.59 p.m. Your discussion basically is going to be due, your initial discussion response is going to be due on Thursday at 11.59 p.m. And then you have to respond to two of your peers uh, before Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. Uh, for the discussion in Unit 4, uh, you're basically going to read the scenario on page 123 and 124. And based on the scenario, you're going to discuss uh, four critical thinking questions on the page 124. And basically what they're saying for this is your initial response is due Thursday night, as I said before, at 11.59 p.m. And you must respond to two peers and support your response to to your post and to your peers uh, before Sunday at 11.59 p.m., sorry. Also in Unit 4, you're going to have your midterm exam. Uh, so once again, your midterm exam is going to cover chapters 1 through 7, and it, it opens up on the 29th of May, and it closes on the 4th of June at 11.59 p.m. Uh, once course starts, I will be sending a response out to all of your proctors in which I'm going to provide them with the dates of your exam and the password for each exam. So in other words, your proctor will have the dates for your midterm exam with the password and your final exam with the password. I'm also going to send you an email letting you know when your midterm exam is due and when your final exam is due. The only thing you will not have in your email is basically the password. So just be mindful that you have your midterm exam, chapters 1 through 7, starts on May 29th, and it's going to close on June 4th at 11.59 p.m. I am still thinking about whether I'm going to provide you with study guides for unit 1 through 7, uh, uh, things you need to know for the exam, for for chapters one through seven. I haven't decided on that yet, but just know that it's your responsibility to actually read the chapters and get an understanding of what's in the chapters in the event that I do not provide you with an study guide. Okay, Unit 5 will start on May 29th and it ends on June uh, on June 4th. And basically what you're going to be doing is reading Chapters 8, Survey Research. And then you have a discussion in Unit 5 that you have to respond to. And you're going to read the case scenario on page 139, discuss the critical thinking question on page 139, and the discussion board, and provide your initial post, which is due on Thursday night at 11.59. And once again, you're going to respond to two of your peers by Sunday at 11.59. Also in Unit 5, you're going to have assignment. And that assignment basically is reading a case scenario on page 154 based on the scenario. Answer three critical thinking questions on page 154. This is due before Sunday at 11.59 p.m. So all of your assignments are going to be due that Sunday of that week that we will be in at 11.59 p.m. For you to timely support your response could result in you receiving a zero for that assignment. Uh, the students have always made it in the habit of saying, hey, I forgot about this assignment. Can you reopen that up for me? I'm here to tell you now I will not be reopening any assignments for you because part of taking this course online is being able to apply uh, to the assignments in a timely manner. That's once again while I'm telling you that you need to be signing on to Blackboard in your course at least three times uh, out of the day and maybe three times out of the week. Definitely, you know that you're going to be working on Thursday and you're going to be doing work on Sunday. 
So it's your responsibility to make sure that your assignments are posted in a timely manner. Unit 6, which starts on June 5th and it ends on June 11th, and basically you have a discussion board questionnaire where you're going to uh, read the case scenario on page 166 using the scenario, answer six questions, and the appropriate discussion board, your response would be due before Thursday at 11.59 p.m. and responding to two of your peers on Sunday at 11.59 p.m. So just be mindful that uh, you have six questions. So I'm going to be looking for you to post an answer to all six questions. Sometimes students tend to write one big broad statement and doesn't cover all the questions. I'm here to tell you I will be looking at the questions to ensure that you are responding to all the questions that's in that assignment. For you to complete any of the questions in that assignment, uh, overlooking any questions in that assignment could result in you uh, not receiving full credit for that particular assignment. In other words, you could be losing some points. So I would list each question that you're responding to in your discussion individually and respond to each one of those questions to ensure that you're covering all six questions instead of just writing one big broad statement and telling me, okay, you find my six questions in there and the answer to my six questions. It's all about organization. Okay, Unit 7 basically starts on the 12th of June and ends on the 18th of June. Your assignment for Unit 7 basically is to read the case scenario on page 182 using the case scenario answer the, the critical thinking question on page 182. Again, this is due on Sunday night at 11.59 p.m. So you have assignment in Unit 7. You also have a discussion in Unit 7 where you're going to read the case scenario on page 102. And based on this scenario, you're going to discuss the critical thinking questions on page 201. Your a post for this uh, discussion is due on Thursday uh, at 11.59 p.m. And I'm looking for you to have a supported post or response to this discussion question. And then also responding to two of your peers using, again, a supportive response. In other words, it's OK to agree. But I want to know why you agree. What makes it so right for you? Is it something based on evidence proven or is it just your opinion about something? In other words, it's okay to have opinions, but when we have opinions, we want to support our opinions with something from the textbook or a peer review article, which makes it evidence-based practice. Okay, going on to unit eight. Unit eight is your final uh, week of the course, and that starts on the 19th of June and end on the 23rd of June. So your research proposal will be due on the 19th of June at 11.59 p.m. Once again, your research proposal is due on June 19th at 11.59 p.m. Also in your uh, proposal, you want to be taking a look at everything that you should be covered in each one of the sections to ensure that you have the articles. I know from time to time, students would like to go to Google and research an article, and they will find an article, but it leaves them with just a web-based uh, address, OK? I recommend that you contact the writing lab or contact someone in the library about finding peer review articles uh, for your course. It's very important that you ensure that you have posted valid response uh, to each one of the topic areas. Once again, in your proposal, you just don't want to write your proposal. You want to also have a heading for each one of those sections. And when we get to uh, the getting start page, I will show you where the example paper is at so that you can make sure that you actually uh, have something to follow. Uh, you also have a discussion in this week where you are basically going to be uh, completing a course evaluation. I know from time to time students feel this is tedious, but it's very important to the course. Be mindful that you are an accredited program, which means for you to complete your master's, it would only take one year because you are an accredited program. And 
the program is actually based on uh, proven facts that students who are in this program basically are responding to the things that they need, meeting the course objectives. So in other words, you have a series of questions in the evaluation. Sometimes students will answer two or three of the questions and then just forward the assignment. I'm going to be looking for you to respond to each one of the questions. Okay, for example, the first question, do you normally complete a course evaluation? So I'm looking to see if you are one of those students who never complete an evaluation, but managed to take advantage of the accreditation process. Uh, this is one of the supported reasons why we are accredited. Do you take time to read each question? Very simple. You can't overlook it if you're reading each question. So I'm looking for a response to that. Are your answers based on the quality of the course? Are you like or dislike the professor? Did you find, what did you find most interesting about the class? Uh, what would you change? Uh, do you feel comfortable with your research skills? And so just be mindful when you finish this course and go in the field, uh, you're going to do a little research where it looks at the community in which your, your agency is in, and you're going to do a little small uh, research proposal about support that your agency is being provided to the people in their community. So just be mindful. What you learn in this course will pass on uh, to what you're going to be doing in field. So just be mindful of that. Matter of fact, everything that you do in this program will touch on some form of you doing it in field, which you're going to learn it in the classroom setting, but you're going to actually be applying it in field. Also, you're going to have a final exam, which is due on the 19th of June. It opens up, excuse me, on the 19th of June, and it closes on the 23rd of June, uh, and it's at 11.59 p.m. You will not be able to take exams uh, after that time frame. Be mindful also, it's important that you contact your proctor in advance and schedule appointment for your final exam and that you know when your, your midterm exam is due and you have appointment scheduled for that also. Uh, for those of you who are taking exams at your agency where there's a proctor there, be mindful they only have periods when they are actually doing exams. So you have to be mindful of that. If you have an outside proctor and that proctor has made an agreement for you to take your exam, say, on a Saturday or a Sunday, that's all right with me, just as long as you made that arrangement. But just be mindful, if you are going to a proctor at one of the sites, they're only doing exams on certain times and they don't work on basically uh, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, that concludes my discussion about the syllabus, other than to tell you that you want to read what's left in the syllabus because it's very important that you have an understanding of that what is expected to you, of you. Most of the time, student takes an online course because it's a convenient, but it's a great responsibility that's being applied. In other words, you're responsible for the reading, and you're sort of teaching yourself somewhat with me kind of guiding you as uh, reviewing what you're doing through this process, but you are the, the main component that actually learning this. So if you're taking this course online, your time management skills are going to be very important. A lot of times students will share. Uh, I work a job. I have uh, children at home. I have a mom I have to take care of. I understand that. And you understood that before you actually said, I'm going to get my degree. So this is a time when you're going to apply yourself. Will I be understanding? Of course I will. I will be very understanding as long as that you're doing exactly what's needed of you. Uh, that concludes my portion of the syllabus. I will be doing another session, taping session, that will be taking a look at uh, your course in Blackboard. And I want to just stir you through some of the things that uh, you're going to be utilizing in Blackboard. So for now, you can ask any questions about the syllabus uh, in that section that I provided for you uh, that ask anyway. Other than that, 
I wish you all continued success. Just be mindful. It's not my uh, idea of failing students going through this course. I'm here to help you. Learning should be fun. It should be important. Will you be stressed? At times, you probably will be, especially when you're doing something you knew very little about. But most of you are taking this class now. I have really had some social work classes prior to this class, so I know that you have an understanding of what's expected of you. That's the end of this session.